Here, how many people are you, sir? Uh, three adults, okay. one child. Three adult and a child. Yeah, three and child. Okay. That would be a two hundred ninety dollars. Pretty busy little area there, pretty 
vibrant there. Over here to the left, the two oldest remaining buildings on the inner harbor behind the trees. They were built in 1859. First one was our original post office, the second one was the bay. And over here to the left, the Joss Street Bridge. The Joss Street Bridge is a drawbridge that we raised from time to time. Vessels, barges further up the gorge inlet. This building on the left says Janion was originally the Janion Hotel. And they repurposed it just over a decade ago. They kept some phone in the front wall. They have to do that whenever they repurpose the old buildings here in the area of Victoria. Clean as much of the original exterior as possible. Now we're on the edge of Chinatown. Chinatown is not very large. It's only two and a half blocks um, long, or wide by one and a half blocks long. But it was the largest Chinatown in North America right up until uh, 1902. As the oldest Chinese built buildings in all of North America, as the fire and earthquake of, uh, of 1906 destroyed uh, Chinatown, San Francisco, which is the oldest Chinatown. Now, down to the left, you're going to see three brick buildings in the center of this back alley there behind the cars. The only way to get to those three buildings in the center is through Dragon Alley here on our left. Go through the entrance, takes you to your courtyards behind back to those buildings. There's Theater Alley back there to our right. The most famous is Fantan Alley on the right. Named after a popular Chinese gambling game. And Fantan Alley, barely four feet wide in either end. And then if you look down the center, you can see some, there's some signs, there's some businesses down there. It goes right through to Pandora Street. And, uh, where those uh, shops are located today, that's where the opium and gambling dens were located in the 1800s. Into the very early 1900s as well. These are the gates of harmonious interest for passing under. They were placed here to mark the entrance into Chinatown in uh, 1975. And if you look to your left, you can see a beautiful mural on a three-story building. I was just painted last fall, and just above that uh, building, you can see a little rooftop up there. That is the Chinese temple on the top floor. Now, the temple was originally at ground level with the Chinese cemetery behind it. However, they were built on the banks of a ravine originally, and the banks started eroding away, so they decided to uh, move the Chinese cemetery down to southeast Victoria in the latter 1870s. They built that ravine with dirt and they built over top of it. Some of these Chinese buildings to the left, you see there's clubs and associations listed there in the signs. They've been in operation or have been around since the 1800s, those clubs and associations. And then we have the Chinese Public School in our room. Beautiful old building. It was built in 1909 to educate the Chinese community. Still teaching what Mandarin and language does. Mandarin Catholics. Yes, it is. Here to the left is the red brick building. Is the Masonic Temple. It was completed in 1887. The Masons still use it. They hold their various ceremonies and meetings uh, on the top floor. This four story green building to the left is a Hudson's Bay, or was a Hudson's Bay four story department store, built in 1926. Now they built six of these large department stores in major cities across Canada in the early 1900s. They're all identical, they use the same blueprint, they all look the same. But, uh, other big companies, the oldest incorporated business in the entire world, established in 1687. If you look directly ahead, you can see the old church, that is, the United Church, built in 1895, the steeple to the right of our Anglican church. There's one you can't see over there, to the back to the right of the Metropolitan Church. Many churches, from the brick, all denominations were built here between 1885 to about 1910. And many of them replaced the old original wood churches that either the congregation outgrew or were destroyed by fire. In fact, almost every wood church in Victoria was touched by fire in the 1800s. Now, we're on Blanchard Street now, it's named after Richard Blanchard. He was the first governor of the Vancouver colony here. Vancouver uh, Island was originally what it was originally called Vancouver Colony. The mainland of British Columbia was called New Caledonia. Then they were uh, merged together and they became the British Columbia Colony. That went on to become the province of British Columbia in 1871. They officially joined Canada as the sixth province. So Blanchard was the first governor, but he only governed for about a year and a half. He didn't get along with the locals, nor did they get along with him. But 
he gave up and went back to England and James Douglas, the founder of Fort Victoria, became the second governor of the Vancouver Colony. He went on to be the first governor of the British Columbia Company. Stay in town to make a job with me, but to the right, that's our Victoria, our Victoria Royals play their Western Hockey League team that they play the same division as Spokane.
the Vancouver Island on the north end to get a lot more rain, to get 110 inches of rain up there, they're actually a tropical rainforest. Vancouver Island is quite large, it's 285 miles long by up to 65 miles wide, and the actual population is around uh, 900,000 uh, residents now, most of them live here at the south end of Vancouver Island, but several more live up with them along the highway system.
lakes were originally the water supply to Victoria. However, they realized in the 1930s they were never going to keep up with growing population. So they built a large reservoir to the west called Sioux Reservoir and back up on Gold Street. Those two reservoirs supply all of the water requirements now. These two small lakes here are strictly used for recreational purposes. Those are well utilized parks. It's a day park. There's no overnight camping, four beaches, lots of hiking and walking trails, stuff with fish. Pretty cool. And, uh, but it's very convenient to Victorians and their families. It's very cool to sit down and you can look it away for an afternoon. Such. Now, they don't allow any commercial businesses or buildings or recreational properties in the park around the two lakes. However, there is one large commercial building up ahead. You should still be able to see it. The trees are fully leaved out. But on the south end of Delta Lake, we have the headquarters training center. Thank you. 
still running more than operated by the Wichita uh, family today. Last I heard, the three, three grandsons are part of the butcher. Uh, the the Butcher. Uh, Butcher's Butcher. 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 Butcher.